Hey there, bookworms. So guess what? We are in the month of February. So you know that that means it's time to celebrate Black History and Reggae Month. Now, I'm super excited to introduce to you a new series. In this series, every week, we will take a look at some of Jamaica's most influential icons and how they have impacted our nation and the world. So stay tuned. I promise this will be a fun one. Today, we're going to be looking at none other than Mary Seacone. Let's take a look at Mary Jane Seacole, a pioneering nurse who overcame racial prejudice to help others. Now before we begin, here's a quick vocabulary check. What makes someone a pioneer? A pioneer is someone who sees potential, an innovator who is willing to try new things. In other words, a pioneer pushes boundaries to advance a cause or idea or even break a record. No, Mary Jane Grant was born in Kingston on November 23rd, 1805. It was actually during this period when many black people in the Caribbean were forced to work as slaves. Mary's mother was identified as Creole or black with her father being a white Scottish army officer, so Mary was then considered a free person. It was from her mother that she inherited her interest in nursing and her skills using traditional Jamaican medicines. Her mother, nicknamed the Doctress, kept a lodging house at East Street Kingston named Blondell Hall, which was much respected by local people in Kingston. That's where she nursed army officers and their families from Oak Park Camp. Another vocabulary check. A doctress was a healer who used African and Caribbean herbal remedies. At age 12, after much observation, Seacole was allowed to help her mother with the patients. Mary also acquired her nursing skills from other doctors that stayed at the boarding house and was called to assist at the British Army Hospital in Kingston many times. Mary married Edwin Seacole, an English merchant in 1836. Together they traveled frequently to different parts of the world. During their trips to the Bahamas, Haiti and Cuba, Mary broadened her knowledge of local medicines and treatments. After her husband's death in 1844, she gained further nursing experience during a cholera epidemic in Panama. Although Seacole was one of the victims of the cholera epidemic in 1850 in Jamaica, she traveled to Panama to set up a hotel with her brother. While there, she diagnosed what might have been the first case of cholera to occur in that region. Again, in 1853, when yellow fever raged all over Jamaica, Seacole's skills were brought to the forefront. She returned to Panama in 1854. There, her arrival overlapped with the cholera epidemic in that country. There, she aided in medically treating cholera victims and as a result became known as the yellow woman from Jamaica with the cholera medicine. You might be thinking by now, but what is cholera? Or what is yellow fever? According to Britannica Kids, cholera is a disease that infects the small intestine, an organ of the digestive system, and is marked by severe diarrhea, vomiting, and dehydration. On the other hand, yellow fever, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, is a disease caused by a virus that is spread through mosquito bites and these symptoms include fever, chills, headaches, backaches and muscle aches. So can you imagine Mary helping all these people? Following the yellow fever and cholera outbreak, Seacole was in London in 1854 when reports of the lack of necessities and breakdown of nursing care for soldiers in the Crimean War began to be made public. 
Mary traveled to England and approached the British War Office, asking to be sent as an army nurse to Crimea where she had heard there were poor medical facilities for wounded soldiers. She was refused, so she traveled independently and set up her own hotel and tended to the battlefield wounded. In those days, there was a lot of racial prejudice. This meant that people were treated differently and were not allowed to do certain things because of the color of their skin. Mary's hotel near Balaclava was the closest to the war fighting. So Mary was able to visit the battlefield, sometimes under fire, to nurse the wounded. She nursed six soldiers so kindly that they called her Mother Seacole. Seacole would set out carrying bags of lint, bandages, needles, thread, and medicine, accompanied by mules loaded with sandwiches and other food, wine, and spirits arriving on the battlefield at dawn. Mary Seacole died on May the 14th, 1881 at the age of 76 in her home in London. After her death, Mary and her work were sadly forgotten. But about 100 years later, yes, you heard me correctly, 100 years later, a group of Jamaican nurses wanted to know more about her and started to make her famous again. They visited her grave in Northwest London, where the local MP, now known as Lord Clive Soley, promised to raise money for a statue for Mary. In 2004, Mary was voted the greatest Black Briton. In 2016, the statue was finally unveiled in the grounds of the St. Thomas's Hospital on London's South Bank. Now, can you believe it gets more interesting than that? Here are some even more interesting facts about Mary. Mary Seacole mixed plants together to make herbal medicine to help the wounded soldiers as other medicines were not easily available. Now these are some of the ingredients she used in her medicines. So let's see if we can identify a few in our kitchen. There was lemongrass that was boiled to help a fever. Aloe vera which was used to heal cuts and wounds. There was ginger grown to help diarrhea, lemons mixed to help coughs, and okra chopped to heal boils. She would grind these ingredients with a pestle and a mortar, mix them in a mixing bowl or place them in a pan over a fire. And some countries actually still use these remedies today. Now this picture shows Mary seated in front of a wide valley beside a tent next to a camp stool and table full of medicine bottles. Mary is wearing what looks like a military outfit and this is said to have been the last picture of Mary taken around 1873. There is also the Mary Seacole Hall located on the campus of the University of the West Indies named in honor of this courageous Jamaican nurse. This hall was built in 1957 to meet the demand for housing accommodation of an increase in female student population. Mary Seacole is a wonderful role model. Her values of good citizenship, where she always wanted to help and aid the sick and injured, her entrepreneurial skills where she drove herself into war using her own money and resources, and her achievements where she is still regarded as one of history's greatest personalities are still relevant today. I hope by now you realize that the importance of black history lies within us. It actually lies within our knowledge of what others had to go through so that we can live so freely in today's society. Now, thank you so much for watching. And thanks for listening, boys and girls. So see you next time.